Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Think of digital as uh, ones and zeros that are being sent over the air instead of your analog voice waveform. It's sort of like the difference between an old vinyl uh, record, which was actually recorded with the waveform impressed right on the record, and a CD, which is just a bunch of ones and zeros, which when put together properly become the music that uh, you're looking for. As far as the digital modes go, we're going to look at three. On HF, PSK31 has become very, very popular, and that's a mode you'll be able to use with your technician class privileges on 10 meters. On 2 meters, there's a lot of activity on two particular types of activities, one called packet and the other called APRS, and we're going to take a look at both. We're looking here at a piece of software on my machine that's called... Uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. It's a very popular piece of software. It's free. Um, and it is by far and away the most uh, common piece of software that people are using for PSK31. Now we're looking at, uh, I'll just point out the key points of the screen here before we zoom in a little bit. This part across the bottom right here is called the waterfall display. And because it looks sort of like a slow motion waterfall. And it's tuned so that this end right over here is at 14.070 megahertz that's on the 20 meter band and all the way up here if you go up to here at the end it's at 14.073 megahertz so it covers just a three kilohertz slice of the band now the thing about psk 31 signals you can see several in here they're at slightly different frequencies so if they're higher frequencies they'll appear over here if they're lower they'll appear over here and we can hear them a uh, couple right here. We don't actually need to hear anything in order to work this, but uh, sometimes it's helpful just to have it on in the background so we know that it's working. And I'm going to let you listen to that. Those are the actual signals. Sounds pretty ugly, doesn't it? But I'll turn that down. There's almost always activity, uh, certainly during the day and into the evening uh, on this band. Now the way one uses this software is by clicking on the signal of interest. So if we click on the signal of interest, what we see right over here is what the person is typing. And he says, um, computer and had trouble with the software. Back to you, Andy. KF0MPDEKF0TG. And he has stopped, and you can see down here that that signal has stopped. Let's go over here to this signal and see what's going on here. Okay, it's uh, we're now getting some stuff right here. Let's zoom in just a little bit on a couple of these things. This is that waterfall display I was telling you about, and you see these lines right here. Those lines are actually only 31 hertz apart, and they fit right over the top of a signal, just like that, and you click on that, and you've tuned in that signal. Similarly, if you want to call CQ, you can just put this somewhere where nobody else is using the band and go ahead and call CQ there. Right here, we're looking at what this person actually was typing. His uh, transceiver is made by a company called Flex. It's a 5000A. Uh, it's a computer-controlled transceiver at 25 watts. You don't need much power on this mode. He's got a couple uh, large antennas and using FL Digi for his software and uh, he has a computer that he's using it for. It says just got back from the recycle center and um, it comes through in real time as the other person uh, talks or types it comes in in real time. This is the waterfall right here and we're hearing this signal right there and we can see what's being sent if we put our markers around it like this it's a CQ so let's go up here 
to where we can see what's going on in the CQ. Okay, what we're looking at right now is uh, a conversation that I'm having with Lou, KC0UER, uh, hitting some of the highlights here. Up at the top part of the page, you see him uh, sending information to me about his uh, HF radio. And I'm going to skip down here a little bit uh, where he's saying, Back to you, Dave. And I erase my transmit buffer, and out of a macro, I've got a little bit there. I start sending that. It's going out over the air. And I put in my uh, commentary on what's going on. Note that as the text is transmitted, you see it in the upper screen. It's also lined out in the bottom screen, so you know just where it is. I just skipped ahead to where we finished up there, and I'm saying 73 and SK, which means I'm going to be silent from here on out and not transmit. And Lou's going to send back just a little to me. You see it up there, KE0OGDE, KC0UER. Fine business, see you there, meaning at the club meeting tonight. 73 from KC0UER, and that's all there is to it. For packet, we'll be using this radio. It's a 2-meter mobile rig, and it's on 145.01 megahertz, which is where normal packet activity takes place. In addition, we need what's called a terminal node controller that sits between the computer and the radio and you're looking at an elderly DSP-232 uh, multi-mode controller. It does a lot of different modes. I just use it for packet. Uh, it came from advanced electronic uh, applications uh, since taken over by uh, and maintained by a time wave. Let's take a look at how a feature uh, works here. Um, it has a mailbox built in, and you can check your mailbox. Um, and now it brings up a prompt here. I can list the messages in my mailbox. Some of these are, are fairly old. Uh, we do it like uh, read um, 11. Okay, and there it is. Hello from Nucla. My name is John, so on and so forth. So you can actually put messages in somebody else's mailbox. You don't have to communicate in real time, and that can be very handy. Okay, we're going to try to connect to ourselves through DigiPeter. Connect KE0OG via Baxter, which is a DigiPeter that is sitting high on a mountain near here. Now we've actually connected to ourselves, so that means if anything I type, What it is is they sent that I sent that packet to the digipeter. The digipeter listened to it and then uh, spit it back on the same frequency. We're looking at the screen on my little ancient laptop while I get things set up for packet. Uh, my call is KE0OG, and I just put a command in there. It's C and uh, lose call in there KC0UER. And now it says that I'm connected. That means that my radio put out a packet and went to his, and his sent one back to me. I send him greetings. We'll just zoom in a little bit here. Sorry about the video quality. Not much I can do there. So that's Lou typing back to me. And we're doing this in real time. We're not using bulletin boards. We're not using any infrastructure of any kind except our radios and our computers. And that's it. And that's the beauty of this mode, is completely independent of everything. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't repeaters. There are. They're called digipeaters. And uh, we showed earlier the Baxter one where we were able to connect ourselves. Kind of a boring conversation when you connect to yourself. I said that's a very retro way to do instant messaging. It certainly is. This is old technology. Lou just noted that his TNC, or terminal node controller, says that we're connected. And I agree. There's no send or receive switch to push when you're doing packet. You just type it in and the TNC figures out uh, what to do. Uh, generally, TNCs are set up so that it does not transmit until you press enter or reach the end of a line.
We're jumping out just uh, ahead just a little bit to uh, watch this uh, conversation in progress here as Lou and I exchange uh, messages with each other commenting on how much better this is than texting on a phone. Here Lou's telling me what kind of software he uses uh, with his computer. IP serial with outpost. I'll have to look that up. As I say. I'm using Hyperterminal, which is something that uh, used to come with Windows, and it's possible to uh, pick up. It's just a very, very simple uh, terminal emulator. The laptop I'm using, I think I picked up for $70 on uh, eBay. And pay another 20 We're going to take a quick peek, uh, peek here at APRS on 144390. You see a screen that's a map. KE0OG-1 is there in the middle. And you can see as it hears from other stations, it uh, goes ahead and uh, uh, shows the path that that went through. Now KE0OG-5 is my little uh, portable station and uh, it's out in the backyard and I'm going to show you more about that right now. So let's take a look at what a field station might look like for APRS. Here's the GPS and the wire goes down to this very very tiny little plastic thing called the Bionics Tiny Track. It has a display next to it and believe it or not a foldable keyboard you don't need the display and keyboard if you're just going to transmit. There's my power source for the uh, little tiny track. And then over here is my little Oshing uh, radio on 144.39. There's a little display on this thing. This is Tender, which is the name of a repeater actually in uh, uh, Gunnison. It is traveling at zero miles an hour in the direction of zero and it shows the lat and long right there and then tells how far away it is it's 49.13 miles at 72 degrees from north and it's at 8623 feet and the information at the bottom just tells you a little bit about uh, more about the station the part at the bottom is programmable Here's another example of a station who's traveling 56 miles an hour in direction 225. Oh, well, we just got another one on top of that. 28 miles an hour at 15 degrees. You tell how far and in what direction. If you were just traveling in the boonies and wanted other people to be able to keep track of you, all you need is the little, uh, in this case, a tiny track is an APRS uh, transmitting device connected to a GPS, some source of power and uh, the radio. Now you can connect that to any antenna. Right now I've got it connected to a J-pole. But it could be as simple as the rubber duck. And it will transmit your location which is picked up by repeaters and is available on the internet for viewing. Okay, we're looking at the internet and you see me there, KE005. And here's what the raw data appears like. Okay, let's jump ahead to 2019 and talk about how things have changed. Uh, digital modes have changed quite a bit on HF. Uh, one of the things that you need to do um, is to put some sort of a device between your radio and your computer to buffer the signals and so on. This is an example of the Signal Link USB. It's a very popular device to do this. It sits between your radio and the uh, computer. Um, radios have evolved quite a bit. Uh, I was using the 10 tech in the middle where I had to use the little device uh, to make the thing work. I now have the Yesu FTDX 3000. Uh, that actually has a built-in sound card so you don't need an external sound card. What has changed major since then is the development of a series of modes put together by a uh, physicist, uh, Dr. Joseph Taylor of Princeton, who happens to be a Nobel Prize winner. He's also a ham, major ham, and devotes his time to putting together some very, very weak signal modes that uh, can be used. A technician can use these on 10 meters. Um, 
and they can go around the world. They're designed to be very, very weak signal. Once properly set up, they're very easy to use. Um, the mode that is most popular these days is called G uh, FT8. This is what the software looks like for FT8. It's a very highly structured mode. Here's the waterfall for FT8. And here's an example of a, a QSO. In this case, W7 um, TRS called CQ. I answered, um, let's see, he put his, his uh, location, a grid code there. I put my location and my response. He gave me a signal report. I gave him a signal report. Uh, he confirmed and I sent 73. So a uh, very simple contact. I mention this because FD8 has taken the world by storm now here in 2019 for digital modes. I've even seen uh, FT8 on six meters, which is definitely a technician band. And uh, I think you will enjoy FT8 a great deal. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.